Faced with these realities made clear by the fossil record, evolutionists directed all their attention to the claim that man evolved from ape-like creatures. 6,500 different ape species have lived so far, and the majority of them are extinct. The skulls of these extinct apes, both big and small, constituted a great resource for evolutionists on which to exercise their imaginations freely. Arranging the skulls of these extinct ape species from the smallest to the biggest, and adding some skulls of vanished human races to the series, evolutionists concocted the scenario of human evolution. The most important role of this scenario is given to the extinct ape species called Australopithecus. The first Australopithecus fossil was found in 1924 by a paleontologist named Raymond Dart. Since then, Evolutionists argue that this ape species, the name of which means southern ape, is a man-like creature. However, when Australopithecus and chimpanzee skeletons are compared, it is seen that there is no important difference between the two. In the face of this fact, evolutionists hypothesized that Australopithecus walked upright on its two feet differently from other apes. However, two world-renowned anatomists, Lord Solly Zuckerman and Professor Charles Oxnard, refuted this allegation. Simply put, Australopithecus, advanced as the ancestor of man by evolutionists, is merely an extinct ape species. On the other hand, fossils that are included by evolutionists under imaginary classifications such as Homo erectus, Homo ergaster, or Homo sapien archaic, in fact belong to different human races. When these fossils are inspected, it is seen that their skeletons are essentially the same as those of people living today. The only dissimilarities are a few structural differences in their skulls. But differences like these are to be found in different human races alive on Earth today. The famous evolutionist paleontologist Richard Leakey admits that the difference between the skulls classified as Homo erectus and those of modern men is only racial. These differences are probably no more pronounced than we see today between the separate geographical races of modern humans. The only defense left to evolutionists against all these scientific facts is just one thing, propaganda. The baseless scenario of the human evolution is imposed on the public by means of imaginary drawings that appear in evolutionist publications. In these drawings, creatures with hairy bodies and simian features are decked out with overtones of human-like motifs. The given impression is that these half-man, half-ape transitional forms did live once. From time to time, drawings that present snapshots from the social life of these creatures are made. These misleading drawings are introduced in a particular sequence to engrave the scenario of the human evolution on the subconscious of society. Even in the most famous scientific publications, there frequently appear such window dressings called reconstructions and imaginary family tree drawings made by their inspiration. The imaginative power of evolutionists is not limited to fictional drawings and models. They go even further and shoot movies in which imaginary half-man, half-ape creatures act. However, all of these are pure deception. The only evidence at hand is generally nothing more than a few skull fragments or a tibia. 
The hair, skin, nose, ears, lips, or other facial features of a living being cannot be determined from its bone remains. Evolution has shaped these soft tissues, which leave no trace in the fossil, to suit the purposes of their theory and produce imaginary reconstructions in their workshops. Ernest Houghton from Harvard University states that these drawings have no scientific value. You can, with equal facility, model on a Neanderthaloid skull the features of a chimpanzee or the lineaments of a philosopher. These alleged restorations of ancient types of man have very little, if any, scientific value and are likely only to mislead the public.